So you want to color your artwork using cell shading technique, but you don't know exactly how to do it. Because today we will be discussing everything about the fundamentals of cell shading and the basics to keep in mind in today's video coming up. But before starting off with that, I just wanted to mention that our, our Discord server recently hit its first 20 active members. So thanks a lot for that. It's basically a server where we hang out, play games and share our artwork. So if you want to join, the link will be in the description. You can join right now. And at last, I just wanted to give a shout out to Demon Daddy Musa, Fan and Seronix. You people are really awesome. Enough with that, let's just move on with the video. So starting off with the color process, the first thing we'll need is a proper line art layer. A one which is ready to use, just like I have over here. And we'll be using it to demonstrate how you can color your artwork using the cell shading technique. But before that, we actually have to understand how cell shading actually works and how it actually and how it affects your basic shapes and structures in different lighting scenarios. Well, cell shading is basically a coloring technique which is usually used in creation of cartoons or anime as it adds another dimension to a 2D image by creating an illusion of depth. The best example of this technique in action is basically any anime you have watched so far, whether it's AOT, Dragon Ball Z, Code Geass, Death Note, so on and so forth. You just name it. To be very honest, many animation studios are now using the same technique but with 3D models for creating their animations as well as games. We are not going deep into that territory, you get the point. It's a commonly used coloring technique. Now, since we have discussed what cell shading actually is, now let's discuss about how it affects the shapes in different lighting scenarios so that we can apply this information on the initial line art and color it properly. And in order to properly understand that, we have these basic shapes like cylinder, sphere, cone and cuboid to demonstrate the same. So let's say for this scene, we have our light source, the main light source, which is maybe a sunlight, is sitting somewhere at the top right hand side of the screen. So let's discuss how this particular lighting scenario will affect our scene. Now, obviously, unlike my previous video on a similar subject where we talked about smooth shading, this time the highlights and shadows and the transition between these highlights and shadows will be much more decisive instead of being smooth and faded out. In similar words, there will be no gradient transitions between colors. The lighting and shadows will be much more harsher. Another thing you have to keep in mind for a basic cell shaded image, three tones of colors are enough. One will be for our lit base color or a mid tone. One will be for a highlight and the other one will be the shadows. And the way we will be achieving these, for our highlights we will be creating a new layer, decrease its opacity a little and we will be using a white color to make these highlights. Whereas for our shadows we will be repeating the same process but with the black color on a separate layer. Also if you want to add extra sense of depth in your image, you can add a bounce light which is being reflected from the flow and hitting the object at its shadow area. And now, as you can see, when you look at your cylinder as well as your cone, they kind of are shaded in the same way. The lighting and shadow over here are basically straight line moving around with the lines of your cone or cylinder respectively. The face on top of your cylinder is basically exposed to light, so it is lighter than the rest of the object. When you come to the sphere, since it's a round surface, the point where the light is hitting directly will have a harsh highlight, whereas as you move down the surface, it will eventually fade into shadows. However, for the cube, it is a fairly simple shape. It has three faces on the screen right now. So basically we can only see three faces. So adding mid-tones, shadows and lighting is pretty simple. As I said, the same logic. The areas where the light is hitting directly will produce highlights and where it's not hitting directly will produce shadows and in between this area, the basic transition between both of these areas is the mid-tones. If you want to add bounce light, you can do that as well. Now, since we are done with that, let's move back to a line art. So that we can apply all of this knowledge which we learned right now in our art piece but in order to do that the first thing we have to do is we have to divide our face or our portrait or our character into basic shapes the ones we just discussed previously well if you look at this side of the face the right hand side of the face it looks like a flat face of a cuboid not exactly it's a much more weirder version of that but it will behave just like it and when we talk about the neck the overall shape of the neck it kind of resembles our cylinder and when we look into the eyes, they are kind of a semi-spherical shape. And just like that, we will be going so on and so forth, dividing the entire face into familiar shapes and structures. Now, for our lighting scenario, we will be going with a basic light, which will be coming from the left side of the screen. That means the other side of the face, the right hand side, will cast shadows and bounce light, obviously. Uh, the front will have some mid-tones and all the kind of cool stuff. And since it's a fairly big portrait, we can add more depth in terms of lighting. We can add more tones if you want to. 
obviously it totally depends on your art style how big the character actually is in your scene or basically how much time you have since we are done with basically setting up the guidelines for our shadows and lighting we are ready for cel shading our character so for that we will be duplicating our line art adding some flat colors into it basically mid tones and we are pretty much done since we already have the guidelines for us for lighting and shadows it's pretty much smooth sailing from here now in order to make shapes for our lighting and shadows we'll be using a freehand brush tool or contiguous brush tool whatever you call it go into its tool settings change the fill settings to foreground instead of background color and set this option to raw instead of curve or straight this tool will really help you a lot when it comes to making bigger shapes for your shadows and highlights just make close shapes using this tool and it will give you a proper area filled with your shadows or your highlights now the last step is actually adding these highlights and shadows or creating a sense of depth in your character portrait now there are two ways of doing this the first one i already mentioned in the very beginning of this video when we were talking about different shapes and how to shade them we can either use a normal layer with less than 40 or 50% opacity and use white or black colors for highlights and shadows respectively but since i love to play my life on the hardest difficulty instead of just going away with this technique what i'll do with this is that i will be picking up all the colors for our highlights and shadows manually uh, because why not it is a good practice and it will make you understand how colors behave with each other basically color theory so the way i select these colors for our highlights and shadows is basically pretty simple you use the color picker you select your mid tone which is already on the canvas now you go to the color selection tab and over here we will be making our color a little bit darker and then we will be shifting our hue either one color forward or backward for our highlights and shadows and as soon as you have the color just repeat the same process with different colors as well obviously there is a lot more into this process of selecting your colors manually but in order to summarize this this is basically it it's all the basic information you will need to color your characters or your portraits whatever you're drawing now coming to the amount of details or tones you can go on with i have seen many animes just getting away with two layers of lighting and shadows one is for your shadows and the other one is just your mid tones if you add highlights it becomes three layers of detail when you add bounce light it becomes four so on and so forth but if you overdo it it kind of ruins the entire purpose of cel shading because from a distance it looks like you actually have colored your image using the blending technique so yeah just don't overdo it so yeah this was it for today's video as i said if you are interested in the discord server you can join right now the link will be in the description if you like the video comment down any of your video suggestions comments criticism feedback and i'll see you guys next time until then peace